Welcome to the Think Different Podcast, everybody. My name is Will. I'm here with Chris and Tim. We're about to interview Chris. But it's going to be an exciting episode because we have our very first Apple Genius interview. That's right. You don't have to hear me talk anymore. This is part two. If you want to hear part one, we invited one of our former Apple colleagues. His name is Chris Villamil here with us today. And we are going to interview him again to talk about the Apple Store. But before we get started, make sure you check out at Think Different Podcast on our Instagram and our Facebook. And it's at Think Diff Pod on Twitter. We want your reviews. Please go to your iTunes, your Spotify, your Pandora, your Google, your Zoom, and anywhere you can go to leave a review, leave it. But before we get started, Tim, Vacation Tim, how are you, sir? Doing pretty good. It was Valentine's Day. Me and the lady had a good time. We know. We and, saw the uh, video. Oh. That, was weird. that was a weird video. <laughs> uh, now, but yeah. Now, now I have to ask Tim. Like before you did your thing, you know, did you ask permission first? <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. I'm talking about going on a date with her. What the hell is wrong with you? Oh yeah. Uh yeah. No, I asked like, her did permission. You, did, and her parents are cool with it? Yeah, they were cool with it, yeah. Oh, so you asked for permission? I, yeah, that's good. Right. I, I made reservations. Did you? Yeah, yeah he probably I, I probed. signed a consent form. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then you, so you presented the consent form, yeah. and then after that, he probed. you probed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm acknowledging, I'm acknowledging that and assuring you that you definitely ha- must have had a good Valentine's Day. I don't and, like uh, this. And you know what? I'm wishing you a fair fond well and an invitation to return to probing next year. <laughs> oh, a lot of inside Lego there. And we also uh, and we also had the member interviewing today. His name is Chris Villamel. Chris, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Love Groundhog Days. My favorite. Yes, and in fact, we just saw, we said and we celebrated the presidents because we were off that day and we didn't give a crap about it. But we were just off. That's all that matters. I mean. I don't even know who's president now. Uh, it's it's Trump, sir. He's a WB Hall of Famer. Oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, duh, yeah. of course. The only thing I know about him is that he's a WB Hall of Famer and that he was in Home Alone too. Yes, he's da- down <laughs> the hall. Yeah, yeah. Down the hall and to the left. Down the hall and to the left. Uh, yeah. All right, famous pr- words. Famous words made by President Trump. Well, this. <laughs> Show today is all about interviewing Chris. We want to talk about his entire process of starting with Apple, being with Apple, and why he ended up leaving. So we want you guys to hang around for this wonderful interview. And Chris, let's get started right away. Let's talk about wanting to work at Apple because you, uh, I'm sure you had to tie a nice interview process that you had to go through. That yes. we all did. So I had, at the time before I, I had interviewed with Apple, I was doing freelance tech support around my hometown. I was going to school and I was waiting uh, tables. I was going to community college for computer networking, which I don't suggest if you want to be happy in the world. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so, uh, then one of my buddies uh, had just started working there. Uh, he told me to apply. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll apply. Then I went through interview one with somebody I don't remember. Then I went with interview two with a uh, store leader, then interview three with the market leader. So three different interviews. Apple, um, it does it does take a long time, too. I think that was two months, but that's because many managers were getting fired at the same time, so there was a lot of that. Um, it takes some time, and I do believe that the acceptance rate for new applicants within Apple is up is lower than acceptance rates at most Ivy Leagues. Yeah, I've heard that before. Uh, yeah, in terms of sheer number of, of people applying versus people that get accepted. It took me a year to get hired at Apple, especially that I've been trying to apply over and over and over. And then finally, you know, the main thing I think that got me in the door was because of my Final Cut Pro knowledge, and that was to lead to a trainer spot, but also someone in the store that could explain the software to maybe a higher end, reta- like a business retail mm-hmm. or a student. So that was one of the major, I think, things that got me into the store. If I had to yeah. pinpoint something, because I had no, I had some retail, I worked at KB Toys. That was probably the, and then I worked at Six Flags. That was um, my for those who don't know what KB Toys is, it's like a smaller <laughs> Toys R Us. I didn't. Know Some KB people might Toys not be was. around for that, <laughs> <laughs> but it was more expensive. Everything was always a dollar more in there than Toys mm-hmm. R Us. Mm-hmm. Always, nothing was ever cheaper in there. Yeah, 
I know all their action figures are always like three to five dollars more. Yeah. Nope. That's why they're not here anymore. Yep. And, and uh, neither is Toys R Us. So. Yeah. Not, well, sort of. They actually <laughs> opened up, back right? up in back, New Jersey. Right? Yeah. Yep. They did open one oh. in New Jersey. But uh, talk about. Uh, do you remember the actual date you started? Like the actual uh, time frame. Um, technicals. Uh, they said March. Something was my start date. My actual start date was in April, though. What year? Uh, of ooh, what was that? Twenty. 14, I believe. Uh, wait, no, 20. Let's see. Now, and you were there and you were there for the very day it opened, right? If I'm correct. No, no, I was not there for the store opening. I was there after they were um, hemorrhaging people. And um, that store also, just as a heads up, also opened up with the lowest MPS of any store ever that was opened. No for way. For people that don't know MPS, uh, that's their rating. It was the worst open store of all time. Net promoter score. Yeah. Um, yeah. Period. So, yeah, because in the middle, left a lot. Yeah. In the middle of that, there was a big change. I believe there was a lot. All managers basically got fired and yep. new ones all came aboard. All, all but two um, were, were fired out of, ooh, I don't know, I think six or eight or something like that. And, and uh, I, I, if I'm correct, I, were they all new managers to Apple or were they ones from previous stores? Do you recall? Um, almost all of them were new. The ones that stayed had been with Apple before. Shocker. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. Like the people, they were, they were better than, than those other people. I have to tell you, uh, as far as managers go, uh, you know, I'm surprised on how often they don't fire certain managers. They like to move them around to kind of give them a different yep. experience. Yeah. But they, and, a, but, and tries. Yeah. And, but they don't, you know, for me, it's, they really need to step up on yep. firing people a little bit more than they should. Yeah. Uh, um, I think giving people chances is always fair without a doubt. But when somebody is in a position where they're threatening the position and livelihood of another person, they need to go. Um, and that happened quite often hmm. there. So, talk, um, so talk about your first role as working in the yeah. Apple Store. Yeah, so I was what they call the time an FRS, a family room specialist, is what they hired me on as because they weren't sure that I was going to be good with Macs and mobiles, uh, mobile phones. So that was the first few months. Granted, they only had somewhere between like eight, I think eight geniuses in total. Maybe no, no, they had way less. I think they had four geniuses and eight technicians. It was very understaffed. Um, so even though I was an FRS, I was still doing Mac repairs that were easy, um, even though I probably technically liability shouldn't have. <laughs> um, and then, what was it, eight months into somewhere around there, I w or six months, uh, I was turned into a genius there, um, which means I started doing I went out for, for training, which was absolutely one of the best experiences I've ever had. Going out there, you learn so much. You, you really get into the culture of it, uh, even though it's extremely expensive to live there, which is also part of that culture. <laughs> um food was fantastic it was just it was a brush of fresh uh, fresh air my trainer was fantastic um other people weren't so lucky definitely now for those who don't know at the time geniuses you got to go out to three different campuses either in texas i believe georgia and california now california yep. was the most popular one and obviously that's where the big apple campus is, it is and i would say most of us went out there uh, some people weren't so lucky. They had to go out somewhere else. I was lucky. I got to go out twice, one as a creative, one as a genius. So I've had – I got that four weeks out there in uh, California of learning. And three weeks is a long time to yeah. be away. Uh, I mean, if you really th think about it, like I was in the middle of my engagement at the time. And like for – like we were in the month – I went in the month of October and I was getting married in December. So a lot of things were starting to really come close. Oh, and wow. I couldn't be there for that any of those things. So it, it was definitely interesting time frame, uh, but yeah. tell tell me uh, any really cool experiences that you had out there as far as like a big memory. Oh, the food, I ate so much. The food, right? Good it's... food. Yeah. There's also a really cool museum there um, uh, about computers um, that they have uh, old code code breaker machines, the first Pixar boxes, um, one of the first <laughs> concepts for like a driverless car and that kind of stuff. Really cool compute uh, computer nerdy like history um it's it's right in, in cupertino and i gotta tell you the facility where we stayed at was amazing they gave us yeah they gave you beer for free three days out of the week is which it was, an apple apple owned facility 
No, yeah. it's 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 own it's a courtyard, I believe. Uh, or, yeah, courtyard Marriott. Oh, okay, and okay, yeah. and they gave us three do- days of free beer during by the time we got back from our training, and every morning they give you breakfast. Uh, and then they also had grills there. They had a basketball court here, the pool. Like it, and during it was football season, so we got to watch like the big screen TV next to the fire pit outside. Yep. It, it, there were really some really cool like also and you're NBA ta- Jam. NBA Jam. Yes. That was such a great game. So in the facility, which I still can't tell the name technically, we weren't allowed to. Um, there was a, the facility which you train in, which at the time was different depending on when you went. I went when it was a newer facility that was just launched. Um, they had an NBA Jam arcade, uh, arcade station, which every genius had to basically play <laughs> and would play during their break. No way. Um, yeah. It was tradition. It, like it, Everybody played NBA Jam. Even if you weren't good, it didn't matter. Um, that was That was a classic. Now, did everybody in your class... Now, it's important to know that there was a safety training involved... Did everybody in your class pass that? Um, <laughs> I went out with somebody to training. Um, they did not do as well. Actually, the, out of my class of 12, uh, four people had to retake many tests. Yeah, and I, I, you had to get 100%, so there was mm-hmm. no there was no leeway oh, on that. Mm-hmm. And I did have people out there that when to redid the test, and they still failed it. But here's the thing. They go back back home, and they still get to take the test at home at mm-hmm. their Apple store. So they so never they reap the bad fit. Exactly. Yep. It was it was a little ridiculous. Um, to me, yeah, to had, me, I, you should have been fired. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, the, <laughs> Listen, it, it, safety when it comes to lithium-ion batteries is, is absolutely no joke. Um, accidents happen, sure, but they should be the rarity. They should not be the... Uh, the common practice. Talk about some of mm-hmm. your favorite moments working at Apple, like some of the things that really stood out to you. So, yeah, I, I mean, there were definitely a lot of, of, of favorite moments. Um, there was there was a lot of ridiculousness that happened. My favorite one, personally, was, and this is way later, this is towards the end, honestly, uh, HomePods had come out, and, the, and uh, there was a phone that was connected to all the HomePods in the store. Um, oh boy. Before uh, before I I punched out, um, you could say Yo Dingus, which is code for Hey Siri. Um, I said Yo Dingus, play a uh, complete farting soundtrack. I believe it was, and I meant to play in one room in the back where only one person can hear it. <laughs> Every customer heard the just, uh, a orchestral arrangement of flatulence, and it was that's hilarious. It was great. And then I had punched out when I did this too, uh, and my senior manager uh, came back and he was not happy with that. I I was crying laughing. I'm a five year old. Far too funny to anybody. I, I don't care if you're 92 or you're three. And everywhere in between, farts are still funny. Yep. Fart, jokes, fart jokes are great. I don't know, no one yeah. should be hating on the fart jokes. Yeah. Was the senior no manager good. laughing? Um, he was pretty mad, um, but I think he was laughing at the same time. Yeah. Like, like he was smiling, but like also angry as hell. So it was hard. I just wanted to go home and, and through the cloud of flatulence. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that was definitely one of my, my favorite memories of ridiculousness. Um, you know, also, had, also had, being in the genius room was always one of the best things because really there's no filter back there. You guys can we can say whatever we want. We're we're in a room where no one's around. Mm-hmm. It's locked. Not everybody can get in that room. So it, that was like a special thing to have that that room, which is one of the reasons why being in the family room or being a genius technician was always one of the perks. Mm-hmm. It was always one of the perks, especially because um, as a genius, you have to make sure that the kid that lost a. a, a a random text message from their friend or a Snapchat. Uh, you had to make sure that that person's issue was as important as a person that lost thousands of photos of their baby or lost one or family members that are dead. Yep. So what happened is your empathy drains real bad. So what do you want to do when your empathy drains real bad? You want to just talk about it and go in the back and like chill with other people and laugh and, and make fun of the situation. And that's where the, uh, that's where you do in the repair room, you know? And that was one of the better parts is just, going back and just shooting the shit. Now, what was... You also got to do a special experience in the store as well. You got to be... You did, like, a six-month experience. Yeah, uh, I got training. to train. Yeah. yeah. So, talk about so, that. 
training at Apple is interesting because training at Apple, I later learned, the documents hadn't changed in four years. Um, so what I was trying to do was make it so it was relevant to what we were doing today, um, which was good. I, I definitely got a lot of people to, to learn new things, have different perspectives, and, and that was all fine. And, and and it definitely helped me with training different people because there's some people that were very receptive, some, some people that weren't, and it helped me um, learn how to make connections with different people to get them to learn, uh, even if they didn't want to. Uh, and that was that was a good time. Uh, definitely, though, Apple's training material, not going to lie, if somebody out there is, is over in, in the Austin campus and in charge of that stuff, update your shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? It's old. It's really old. It's outdated. Um, you're still calling services and, and, uh, and products that don't exist anymore. Um, and then they tried to change it to an app that didn't work well, and it was just... Like, get, get, get your stuff together, guys. Come on. Like, <laughs> were, you still, you were, were you still teaching them about ProCare? Uh, no, but I was still ta- teaching them about the uh, the activation iPad. Ah. Um, oh, yeah, the activation they were still iPad, calling, yeah. They were still calling Isaac's Easy Pay. Oh, nice. Um, they were There were so many things that were outdated in that. And, like, you look at the picture of, of the Isaac. Uh, for people that don't know, that's the handheld device you check in and out people on. Um, they were much better when we left, but boy, they were terrible when I started. Oh, you have um, no, oh, no, 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 no. You weren't <laughs> there. Don't even, because I was there before we had those when we were using the Windows yeah, the machines. the Windows ones, yep. So yeah. don't even. You had it lucky compared to me. It uh, was better, but it was still bad. It, better than what the damn Windows thing was. Yeah. It was, uh, they, they were not great, but anyway. While you were a genius, did you feel like the role was getting better or worse as you were moving along? So Apple, as as a company, I feel like was it, it is less empathetic, less in touch, and losing the connection that they had with their pro customers. And it, they're kind of having, though they can maintain sales and do extremely well, they're still having kind of an identity crisis. Um, now, geniuses, when I started, um, and this is different, and it was different even five years before me, like the first set of geniuses, those were the guys that need to know terminal only, that kind of stuff. They were, they were a hundred percent, uh, you need to know Apple. When do you think, out. when did you think that changed? Because I know that changed ta- when the iPhone came out. Oh, okay. That's what I think. So that was way before me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so and, and you can talk, you know, there was, there was lead geniuses and other people that we worked with that were there for a long, a lot longer. And, um, so that changed when the iPhone came out, then they, they changed it to a kind of hybrid where, yes, you need to know some things, but really these are the, the best troubleshooting steps you can take to go ahead and resolve any issue. And, and I enjoyed that. But by the time I had left, it was, Hey, press these buttons to scan this thing and send this out to depot. Um, and, and that was that was a disservice to new incoming geniuses that want to use their ACMT for future work outside of Apple. Because I'm sorry, but like that's not going to prepare you for actual Apple I w- issues. I wonder if Apple, though. I mean, we're technically not fully ASMT. Yet. Like, there's like a, there's like a software test that we don't take that is part of the certification, but I don't mm-hmm. think we're technically under it. So, but back then, I had to take those tests. I had I, to take all those tests. Yeah. So oh, but now, know, now you don't. Yeah, I I don't know if you're gonna get you're gonna get the AMCT certification because you yeah, have you to go to the, the the Apple, but not Care, the, but Mac the soft, but as far as the operating system one, I don't think yeah. you do. Um, and you still get the Apple Care or iPhone technician or iOS technician, whatever they call it. Mm-hmm. Like those two are 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 still good, but but our, but our documentation did lack some terminal items that we could have used. Yep. Uh, you know, there was actually a specific genius that would use terminal commands mm-hmm. uh, because he knows how to do it. Yeah. yeah. And there was good guides online to, to, to like, you could definitely teach her. To be honest, terminal is not a hard thing to learn. Um, and, and you can teach yourself online how to do that. And you can honestly just have notes for yourself to refer to when you need to do something in particular. Like, you don't need to remember everything. No. Yeah, um, and you should. But honestly, there's a lot of great articles that that mm-hmm. that could really tell you how to do things. In fact, I learned how to make Time Machine automatically Snapshots. point to a oh, or that one, yeah, to point to a server. 
instead yeah. of pointing to an external hard drive, which I thought was really cool that you could do that. And mm -hmm. it, again, you just read stuff. But let's talk about some of the worst moments. And for me, it was always coming down to that some people that work there work there and have roles and uh, say they're a genius, but they're really not a genius. They're there and for that, the money and, and, they're, they're, and they're seniored. And, That's it. Well, they're seniored and they have they can't get fired. Yep. They were, we all know who so, you are. Uh oh. Yeah, there are people that were there that they needed help, and I don't mean help in the like. I here's a here's a cookie or a sandwich. You're gonna be okay, kiddo. Oh, I mean, be. like you need to you need to be sent to a different country to realize and have some damn perspective in this world that things are not this way. And they were in their own little high school bubble forever. The problem is. Apple kept them in, that, in those bubbles forever too. Yeah. It didn't help them. If you enable somebody like that, they're just gonna be like that forever. It's, it's it's like it's like any type of person. If you if you just say your poor behavior is okay all the time, that's gonna be okay all the time. <laughs> um, and that happened and that happened across Apple stores between manager levels, geniuses, whatever. If you had if you were seniored and you complained to HR enough, you had never getting fired. Um, and that was that was a huge problem. And that was on the employee side. On the on the uh, customer side, I already mentioned uh, last uh, on last week's. You know, there was there was definitely the entitlement of the rich and the entitlement of the poor. But either way, they were both buttheads. But I I think people need to realize that when you're talking to somebody in front of you that's trying to help you, whether you're at a doctor's office, you're talking to a technician, you're talking to whomever, they're trying to help you. So be a human to them. Yeah. No one remembered that. Let's talk about your worst moment at the Apple Store. And we, mm. we did discuss it last week, but we obviously don't have the recording. We sure but... don't. So I'm going to say my worst funny and my worst <laughs> sad. I'm going to go with my worst sad first, uh, which is I'm going to prerequisite this with don't make jokes about people dying. Um, <clears throat> now let's find out. So um, <laughs> there was a user that came in uh, one time uh, that, I was, that I was really friendly with this user. They were really funny. Um, they had dropped off their computer for, for repair and, uh, they, they left, uh, with their, uh, child, a uh, single parent left week one of having to do their, like in the repair, I actually had to end up crewing the repair for those who don't know what the crew is. That means we had to replace the computer and out for this particular one, it was an EFA capture. Actually, it's an early field failure analysis, meaning that it was so early in failing that I had to capture why, um, it was ants actually. <laughs> there was ants in the computer that broke, that broke it. <laughs> oh, they what? Were so they were so nice that I vacuumed them them things out and then just sent them <laughs> away. But anyway, moving on. Um, so that person was gone for a week, and I'm like, man, like, at first I'm like, man, I hope they're okay. And then week two comes around, and I'm like, man, is this person dead? Because, uh, you know, like, they dropped off, like, a $2,300 computer, and I'm and, I, and then, like, by week week three or whatever, I'm like, man, this person's got to be dead. Um, jokingly, of course, I never want someone to be dead. Uh, eventually somebody comes in and says, um, they're ready for pickup, bring the computer, the new computer out, which I luckily transferred all the information for it and made a default password for them so that like anybody can get in. The reason why that's important is because it was the relatives of that person that were at the Apple store that user had died. Um, and I felt terrible. Oh I God. felt so bad because I yeah. had made that joke. On top of that, they were a very nice person, and they had left behind a child. Um, I straight up like was teary talking to the uh, relative because they were so like. At first, they worried that we replaced the computer and they didn't have any information. And I'm like, Nah, nah, I got everything for you. Don't worry. Like, I can get you in, even though you technically shouldn't be able to. Like, it. it they had death certificate and all. It was. It was super sad. But but the point was that you were in the Never back before you went fun. out, before you went out and talked to that person, you made a joke regarding that, you know, <laughs> oh boy, yeah, like this person's dead. And that like you made the joke and then the pickup happened. Yeah. And, it and, was and it was, was insta evil karma. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> it like, was so quick. Like that was a story I'll never forget just because yep. of the timing of when you said it. And then the same day, that person came in and picked it up. It was about 15 minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that, so never 
take life for granted. And even if somebody goes missing for a while, obviously hope that they're alive. Right, right, right. And probably don't joke that they're dead. Cause yeah. They be. Well, I'm sure you'll never do that again. But what was your sure won't. What was your funniest? The funniest uh, one was actually there was. Now that I think about it, there's actually two. I'm gonna go with the first one that you guys already know. The first one was there was uh, the rose gold iPhone 6s. I think it was had just come out, and somebody had a, a, a 6s that was silver, and this user uh, was uh, shit faced. They were drunk. They were <laughs> super inebriated, um, and they're drinking out of a Gatorade bottle, which I'm pretty sure they put jungle juice in there then because they just put like Everclear in. The... Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Classic. Um, yeah, just <laughs> super classy. Um, <laughs> So I'm repairing this person's phone, and they just lean over to me, and they're like, hey, I'll suck your dick for uh, iPhone 6S Rose Gold. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that didn't happen, obviously. Um, but what was I would say about four different people heard this person say that to me and could not stop laughing. That I'll never forget. Somebody tried to, to Did you keep your composure? Offer. Oh, I mean, like the best I could. <laughs> That's how do you, good, right? Yeah. How, how do you how do you keep your composure when somebody says I want to suck your dick in the middle of public? <laughs> like you're a stranger. Um, the second one was, and I just thought about this recently. There was another user um, that I had helped out. I think she might have been a comedian too. Um, oh, cool. She, she was really funny, but like I helped and I fixed her. And she's like, "Listen, I'm not gonna lie." I kind of want to bend you over the table right now. Or sorry, I want to be bent over the table right now. And I just want you to like plow. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. I get it. Like, like she was a comedian. So like, I, I get it. But I'm like, wow, you, uh, that you really said that. Quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was the second funniest um, interaction with the user. Well, thank you yeah. very much for sharing that. I was so yeah. moving. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> So, uh, except for the first one, that wasn't really moving. Uh, so, Tim, uh, you had some questions that you wanted to ask uh, Chris. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess just like entirely in a nutshell of working at Apple, what would you think is the coolest perk in your opinion? Um, uh, Apple uh, em- employee stock purchase program, 15% off of your stock while you're working there. If you don't get it, you're not getting free money. Yeah, you're a fool if you don't get that. Like, honestly, the perks is always one of the major things. Like, I would, I, if I had to, like, have my last job, like, working at Apple retail as, like, a specialist, I would do it just for the health mm-hmm. insurance. Like part timers get the same thing. It's yeah, you, know, you get the fifteen percent off the stock. You have your four hundred one k there. I mean, now they just introduced that twenty k of your adoption is going to be covered uh, for fees. And on top of it, now women who are coming back to work can work any hours they want, get full time pay for a for a full month. Yep. You know, it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, honestly, they there's they are they have extremely good benefits. Um, I would say, though, I uh, hope they start paying people more there because it, but, but do you but you, have, but you have to look at it like this, too. And I always say, don't look at the salary. Look at the full package. For me, going to school, they covered a lot of my classes that I mm-hmm. went to school for. And on top of it, they introduced a program that allowed me to discount my fi- my my student loans I had to pay back. And I had seven and a half percent went down to three percent with Apple and then by the time I was leaving I owed seven thousand dollars. Did you did you live with somebody at the time though? Did you live with your parents? Did yes, you live I with the, Okay. I mean at the time of when I left you talk about when I left Apple? No 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 when when you were when you're paying this stuff off. So I it was I was both. I was living you're both? At, okay. Yeah. So I, remember I was with Apple for eleven years. You got it. you're talking about <laughs> big lots of true. So like I didn't even know my wife when I first started working for Apple, okay? And, right. and that, that's that's how long I've been there. When I was leaving Apple, I knew part of the structure was if I did not finish my loan payoff, I would have to pay all that money back that Apple mm-hmm. discounted. Yeah. So that right. means so I had to suck it up and put seven grand down because I didn't want to pay more money for those loans. Yep. You know, it wasn't yeah, worth it. I would it. say it is the perfect job if you are in college, about to graduate college, or living at home with your parents. That was me. That is that is without <laughs> a doubt. <laughs> It is without a doubt the perfect job. Yeah. However, I, not to mention, not to mention, Tim got to take off every three weeks. Yeah, it was yeah, awesome. yeah. He was on vacation. He was on vacation more than he was there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, 
it's definitely the perfect job for but however for like career when you want to live on your own and, and have an apartment or a house it is it is not conducive uh, between the hours and the pay it is the benefits are still great but it is not conducive for a well you know that going in you know that going in and yeah. to be honest so you will know that going in there yeah and, and of course like i said the main thing is you get a very good amount of pay when you're all even mm-hmm. when you're even with your short-term disability they pay you a hundred percent not a lot of places do that yeah, that's they right. definitely should, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I was hurt for three months at Apple. I was out of work for three oh, yeah, months. You lost a leg. Yeah, yeah, I didn't lose a leg. I bruised a leg. <laughs> yeah. and, and I was out of work for three months, but app, yeah. but up to 12 weeks, you get paid 100%. A lot of places yeah. are like maybe 80. Yeah. Some of them are 60. You know, yep. it's not like that. You know, you Yeah, ha- the benefits are, are very good, without a doubt. Um, you're buying a house, you're starting a family and all that kind of stuff. Unless you're at a manager level, it's hard. Yeah. It's definitely hard. And remember, the only salary person is the main person in the store. In Apple retail, there's, what, some 500 stores. So probably some 500 people are actually salaried. Yep. And that's the store leaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Everyone else is not. What was your favorite quality that... program? <sighs> probably have seen favorite a lot. Quality program. Yeah. Favorite as in, like, oh, God, that's hard. It doesn't have to be, like, you know, best, worst, or whatever. Just... You know, it sucked so bad, but it was How about my memorable? Favorite. Let's go with memorable. Oh, memorable was, was it wasn't even a quality program. It was the battery discount when yes, we hired Tencent and, that, and, they, and they ignited the batteries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, when, when during this battery program, we learned a lot when it came from that. Yeah. Yes, it was terrible. Apple's, it was awful. Like, yeah. like Apple, the way they started the program, in the middle, it started taking a turn where we finally got to be a little more normal. And then, of course, at the very end, everybody came in. But it was awful. If it yeah. wasn't for that Barry program, we would have never got better at taking notes. We would have never got better at taking pictures. They would you have know. implemented applications that automatically help you take pictures too and document damage. Right. Yeah. And, and you know a lot because a lot of times we would give iPhones back and they were they had either another problem or something else happens or we didn't mm-hmm. put something back together like the camera or it wasn't was working just, or it was just an iPhone seven we gave back to customer the problem was it was an iPhone seven <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh-huh. but but the, but yeah that program really was, that was terrible. like Apple needed that though to you know to make it work yep. better today because a lot of the way the word the bar works today and it's working probably better than it ever has mm-hmm. is because of this program but boy being a part of it though we deserve a raise <laughs> for that we, oh yeah i want to say every technician back of house specialist anybody that had to do with the battery program admin deserved I was back of house and admin. You know what I mean. Like anybody who's doing who's doing who's doing any type of if you're touching a battery, you deserve a ten to fifteen thousand dollar raise oh, really? oh, <laughs> or a bonus. Yeah, yeah, uh, it that, was that bad. You're talking about genius is staying there like longer than they had to. You're talking about That's three. Just... You're talking three hour turnaround times from the battery. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, from when the batteries are back. In, like I was putting in like seventy hour work, uh, like. No, sixty hour work week space. I, I I refuse to do that. Like that and then on top of it, the Mac suffered because of this. So yep. we, we couldn't do a lot of Mac repairs. It was horrible. Yeah. I got two of those bonuses, quote unquote. From Oh uh, with the RSUs? Yeah. No, no, the uh the gift cards that they used to give out. Oh, I never got a gift card once. I've gotten those. Even, even, yeah, they even used... when I get my life threatened at me, I never got a gift card. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've only got it. You a, suck, Chris. Of... Here's a gift card. Yeah. yeah. I only got that twice throughout my Apple career, and that's a long time. So the fact that you got it once, I'm shocked. I got so... it four times in my Apple career. Shut up. You were... Three years. Yeah. What a dick. Sorry. They give... But here's the problem, too, is I already got paid a lot, so probably more than most people uh, because yeah, of how long yeah. I've been there. So. Yep. That could be one of the reasons why I didn't get it. Uh, so right. let's let's talk about the time you le- you were leaving Apple. So what was the ultimate decision that you were you know decided you didn't want to be there yeah. anymore? I had I had tried to been leave for probably about like a year and a half and two. Now, a couple of reasons. Did you technically already leave once and come back? Uh, I almost were in the middle once. of it. Yeah, you I was in the, the middle, middle of it once. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. That's anyway, awkward. um, yeah, it was, super, it was super awkward, but also they understood because that place was hell. Um, <laughs> so there was a few things. One, pay. Pay there is not worth the the amount of drinking habits that pick up from people working there. Um, it was it was it was not worth it for, for for me. Not for as much work I was putting, not for me putting in overtime, not for me trying to help 
grow as much of the store's knowledge as I could. It was not worth the pay. Um, two hours suck. I love my weekends. Love having a steady schedule. It's the best. It's not possible there. Mm-hmm. Um, and three, there are some good managers and there are some bad managers. Luckily, by the time I leave, all the all the bad managers had had left, um, and or and or been pushed out. Um, uh, but I'll never forget my last day there was a snow day. A snow day. Um, four customers came in the entire day, or I don't know, half the day at least. So, when I was there, um, I was expecting. Uh, two people, two managers that were supposed to be there that I, I looked up to. One of them couldn't make it for legitimate reasons. The other one couldn't make it for supposed legitimate reasons. However, the one that couldn't make it for supposed legitimate reasons um, posted on their Instagram that, and, and joined themselves in the snow uh, 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 and, and all of that. And that had, and this is during work too. Um, it left such a bad taste in my mouth. I just walked out of the store and 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 I'm, I'm just told everybody, hey, I'm leaving now. They clapped me out and I left. I'm just like, this is no way to treat anybody, especially after like a week before that. They're like, oh, everybody's our family here. Everybody's our family here. Right, right. Like, yeah, you don't you don't leave your family um, sitting there like that. So I think that place needs. Uh, I think all Apple stores need a major 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 overhaul, major realignment with their customers. But more importantly, with their employees. Do you think the protocols have a lot to do with the changes? Because you know, like an example is, you know, Macs aren't aren't as important as iPhone. That that there is no way to say that. That, that is the honest truth. That's the honest truth. Um, yeah. Uh, and you know, because the, the, there's obviously more iPhones in the world than there are Macs. That there's no yep. doubt about that. Yeah. So the problem is that we're as geniuses. We're our our main role is to do Macs, but also. You know, we have to fix iPhones as well, but our main job is Macs. And when yeah. when the main role that we want to do is not given to us, or we're focusing more on the iPhone, we're no different than a service specialist at that point. Yeah. And it doesn't feel any different. But the other thing too is that you know the genius role is not as special anymore because Apple doesn't give the time necessary to go out to California, learn how to do all those things. Now I'm sure it cost Apple a lot of money, at least twenty k, at least a person just to do all the training that they did. But at the end mm. of the day, if they had a good quality, you know, if they had a good quality experience at the end of the day, isn't that all that matters to Apple? And yes, absolutely. That's what matters. Yeah. Ideally, right now there's no role for a genius to go to that can, is still technical. Yeah, you're with right. It after that. You but, you get you, you hit genius and that's it. But you could do experiences. Uh that is one thing that we that there are available out there. They uh, sure do all a couple, of them. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they have experiences that people can go out for six months and do something. Probably about four or five people that at from our store that ended up going out. So we had yep. a good amount. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. 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 So how many were offered a job? Yeah, yeah, none of them were offered a Whoa. job. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and that makes it that makes it even easier for people to leave too. Well, I also I can't do an experience when I'm when I have a wife here and I have like you know my mm-hmm. pets here. I can't have her do all that by herself. You know, if I was a lot younger, and you know at the age where I didn't have a home or I didn't have like that kind of responsibility, absolutely I would do it. Personally, and this is just a recommendation on on my part. I think when the when a technician hits genius and then after a genius, you have two roles you can go to. Right. Well. I want there to be two. Right now, there's only one, and that's going up to lead genius manager and basically getting yelled at by more customers <laughs> um, and repairing less. There should be one more, and it's very clear that Apple has enterprise support issues within different companies. Apple IDs are impossible to work with within enterprise companies, universities, and that kind of stuff. They, they just don't work. Right. There's no business IDs. Um, business Enterprise and business knowledge of Macs in general isn't good unless you actually hire a former Apple technician typically yeah definitely um, i i would say if apple can figure out a way to go ahead and get geniuses to work with enterprise companies as an actual apple role and that they go out to they they do that kind of stuff that would be ideal because that gets their foot into the door into the, the proper future for them yeah because because if you're idea. if you're going down the technician route you don't want to be in a retail store all of your life. You mm-hmm. want to help out more people. You want to in- impact more people. You want to fix more things. And your weekends but, off. 
Uh, Anyone ever tell me? <laughs> well, you know, and you and you can see how they're trying to push people from not going to an Apple store anymore with Best Buy, the GoTex, I believe that they have now with the yep. new service that they introduced. So yeah. there's a lot of reasons. So Chris, uh, just to ra- kind of wrap everything up, uh, you know, overall, you know, if you had the opportunity, would you work on an Apple store again? I, oh, absolutely. I would do it again um, from the age of uh, 18 to about. I would say you can probably get to about 30 now uh, and you can have a really good time. You can learn a lot. You can interact with a lot of people. Um, and you get a lot of friends at the end of the day. So you get a lot of friends. Yeah. It's, it's a good experience. Um, they Apple as a company just needs to get their head on straight. That's all. All right. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for the interview. We appreciate you coming on to the Think Different thank podcast. You. You're welcome. And thank you for recording this episode. Yes, yeah, awesome. did two different ways. <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate you, Chris, coming on. We hope to have you back for another episode. Uh, Tim, any final words you'd like to say to your best friend, Chris? Uh, I'm glad you are having a better career outside of Apple. Me too. I'm happy we're all happy. <laughs> and yeah. we hope that, and we hope that you name your baby after us. So if you call, if you call her Will Tim, that'd be appreciated. I'll, I'll, I'll consider that. Chalk that up. Right in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you very much uh, for another week here at the Think Different Podcast. Check us out on all of our platforms. And everybody, have a great night. And Chris, again, thank you for coming on and thinking different with us. Yeah. Peace out. Adios.